I am lucky to be joined in studio right now by Jason Chaffetz, former chairman of the House Oversight and Government Reform Committee. He is now a colleague, a Fox News contributor. And in his role as chairman, he was actually one of the requesters who originally asked for this IG investigation. So I'm just going to turn the microphone over to you to get your reaction. You've followed this issue for so long. Just go. <laughs> well, uh, well, first of all, hats off to Michael Horowitz and the Inspector General crew that uh, that he assembled. I think it's a very thorough report, and um, he's a very credible person. It didn't leak in advance, right. and that's saying a lot in, in Washington, D.C. Uh, with that said, I think it's a v- terribly sad day for the FBI. I think if you are a supporter of Hillary Clinton's and wanted to see her elected, you've got a lot to be very upset about. Uh, I, I agree with that. <laughs> and, and if you're uh, if you're a Republican who believes in in justice and that maybe the scales were uh, tipped in favor of Hillary Clinton, that she did not get a thorough look at, you know, what was a started out as a, a criminal referral. Remember, it was the inspector general for the intelligence community that actually made the referral to the Department of Justice saying, look, we have classified information in a non-classified setting. There are a lot of us that believe that the FBI did not take this seriously. And the what you see now is this level of, of animus and, and bias that is just unprecedented. And not from a rank-and-file person down in the bowels of the Department of Justice, but from the person who's in charge of counterintelligence for the United States of America. I mean, this guy didn't work for the Fish and Wildlife Department. Peter uh, Strzok. You, yeah, Peter Strzok. Is, he has a very serious position, and, and, and that is terribly disconcerting. Well, I think what we're all left with is a doubt that justice... Uh, will prevail and that people will give a fair and unbiased approach to it. And and I think that's a deep concern. I thought Director Ray coming out was reassuring. I think he was very steady, as you and I were talking about just before we went on the air. Right. But they have some systemic cultural problems. I mean, one of the things we haven't really talked about yet, and maybe you did right before I came in, but the leaking of information to the media. I mean, I counted the, the there's a graphic at the end of this this long 500 plus page report, 332 documented instances of FBI personnel, not their spokesperson, FBI personnel talking to reporters. Right. That's not fair to anybody. And the report said it, it went through all levels of the FBI. I mean, there was from secretaries. Right. <laughs> they're accepting gifts and yeah. golf outings and going from to reporters. dinner from reporters. Yeah. That is so fundamentally totally wrong. It is a huge, massive pro- problem, and and uh, it's just wrong for everybody in the process. So, Jason, I'm looking at some of these text messages between Lisa Page and Peter Strzok. We all knew about the insurance policy one. Now we see this one about talking about stopping Trump from becoming president. She's she's so upset. She's virtually in tears. He's not going to be president, is he? And Straw comes back with, no, he won't. We'll stop it. He then talked about unfinished business when he wanted to join the Mueller team. Uh, He said he wanted to fix the situation that he had created. And these are top-level people with their fingerprints all over both this investigation into Hillary Clinton, but also the Russia-Trump investigation that Mueller inherited. Now we also are seeing there are other FBI employees that have been called out in the IG report for political bias. There's a transcript of messages between an attorney and an employee, both unnamed at the FBI, when Trump won the election. The first one says, I'm numb. The other one says, I can't stop crying. That makes me even more sad. Like, what happened? You promised me this wouldn't happen. You promised. Later on, I'm very upset. I'm so stressed about what I could have done differently. And the other one says, we broke the momentum talking about, I assume, the October letter that really hurt Hillary. And the other, the last part of this exchange, the FBI employee is trying to downplay the significance of that disclosure to Congress. He says, this didn't sway people. Trump supporters are all poor to middle class, educated, lazy POS, who thinks they'll magically get granted jobs for doing nothing. Um It is very disturbing. I was not a Trump voter. It is very disturbing, Jason, for me to look at the messages flying around among five different FBI agents and employees connected to this investigation 
with their overt hostility and partisanship in the thick of a presidential election. It seems woefully inappropriate. And it's so counter to exactly what we expect of our FBI and agents. You know, my, my grandfather was actually a career FBI agent, you know, and I, I just looked up to him with all the admiration, as I, I think most of America does, that the G-men uh, and, and women that go out there and put their lives on the line will will be fair, even if they may disagree or vote a different way. But that's the fundamental problem. And with Strzok, you know, it wasn't just one email. It wasn't two emails. It's going to taint everything that I think Director Mueller is trying to do. I think it'll uh, distract from the Russia investigation. There's just no credibility. There, there, you've got half the population that probably just would never accept any sort of finding and it's hard to believe that any jury would ever want to convict anybody when you have somebody who has such unbelievable bias and animus towards towards uh, the Trump, you know, Donald Trump, even the prospect of him becoming the president. So, Jason, I'm, so? I'm going to push back on you on on one thing and, and note a part of the IG report where they say that Strzok and Page, the woman he was in a relationship with, in some instances advocated for more aggressive investigative measures in the Hillary Clinton investigation. And the IG did find that they did not have any evidence that political bias impacted the Hillary investigation. They also found that these texts were incredibly inappropriate and they gave the appearance of possible bias. So how do you I mean, how do you respond to that in conjunction with the fact that so much of what Jim Comey was dinged for doing in this report, including his two public statements, those helped Donald Trump politically and hurt Hillary Clinton? How do you how do you square that circle? Uh, look, I think, like I said, both sides, I think, feel like they were they were dealt with on unfairly because they were dealt with unfairly unfairly. I mean, that's just the bottom line. There are too many uh, text messages, people in their own words that destroy their own credibility. Uh, look at Director Comey. I mean, Comey testified in a question from John Ratcliffe that they had not made up their mind whether or not to prosecute Hillary Clinton uh, until she was interviewed. But you look at that interview in the 302s, she wasn't interviewed seriously. They started drafting that thing months in advance. Director Comey's first inclination was, hey, this was gross negligence on housing classified information in a non-classified setting. They crossed it out and softened it up. Mm -hmm. uh, there, there's just not And good. by the way, you know, you know who crossed that out and softened it up was Peter Strzok. Yeah, and so it just it doesn't look like – think about this. This is one other thing that will be interesting to explore. There are more than 300,000 emails sitting on Uma Abedin and Anthony Weiner's uh, laptops. If they had done a serious investigation into what the inspector general for the intelligence community said was a problem, how did the FBI not know that there were more than 300,000 of these emails sitting on, on Hillary Clinton's the closest advisor, almost a sister or daughter to Hillary Clinton? How did they not know that uh, until somebody, an agent in New York, finally says, you're slow walking this. You're not looking at it. The consequences, a letter addressed from Comey to me. Uh, Which ended up hurting Hillary politically. I, I, I got to tell you, I you know, if I'm sitting there and I'm Hillary Clinton, all of a sudden this bombshell drops on me days before the election. I think I'd be pretty upset, especially yeah. when the FBI director says, hey, you're in the clear. Well, she is upset. And in fact, she's taken to Twitter. So there's one of the ironies in this. One of the black eyes for Comey in the IG report is that it turns out he was doing some FBI business in his Gmail account, which was a breach of protocol and that sort of harkens back to the whole Hillary situation. So Hillary retweets a tweet about that, about Comey's use of mm -hmm. Gmail for some FBI business, and she just tweets, but my emails, sarcastically, which actually really bothers me because it's drawing a false equivalent. She disseminated thousands of classified emails, some of which were top secret at the time, from birth, so to speak, through an unsecure server that she wasn't allowed to have, that she set up in her basement, that she lied about endlessly at every single turn, lied about the fact that there were classified emails on that server, and then destroyed 32,000 of those emails permanently after she got caught, and then claimed none of those emails had been classified or work-related, which was also a proven lie. So I think, I understand why she wants to dunk on Comey a little bit for the Gmail thing, but it does not compare to her gross negligence, which frankly was a crime. 
uh, even though she was not prosecuted well, for it, Congressman. But wait, prosecutors said it was not prosecutable. No one has proven it's a crime. Let's be very careful with language. How do you respond to that? Do you think it's a crime? I think you're wrong. I think I'm sure it was just a coincidence, Maria. I'm sure it's just a coincidence that the, the very day that she set up the server was the same day that she started her confirmation hearings in the Senate. I'm sure that was oh, just a coincidence. Oh, no, I'm not saying it wasn't stupid, but was it Come criminal? on, she's the former first lady. She's a former senator. She understands that there's a reason why they have the Federal Records Act and that yep. they keep these emails. You can't claim after serving in the Senate as long as she did that she did not know that. Um, and by the way, the statute does not require you to prove intent. Exactly. In fact, the year before... The FBI went to Great Lakes. There's a press release. They prosecuted somebody, and the press release says, even though we could not prove intent, and they prosecuted him, he pled guilty for taking classified information from his base in Afghanistan back home to in, in to the United States. So, I, you know, and it— And by the way, Congressman, just to jump in, I would also add— I think you could, and Trey Gowdy's made this point, you could prove intent if you wanted to with her with setting up this unsecure server that she wasn't allowed to have and then lying about it constantly, which is one of the ways that you prove intent, people covering things up. This was premeditated, and then the cover-up was premeditated and extended many, many months. So it was a crime without intent, and I think that there's a strong case to be made that they could have proven intent. One of many mistakes I think James Comey made, not recommending charges. I, the other irony that's kind of rich here, they did not impanel a grand jury except for a, a very small portion of what they were doing in order to get some subpoenas. But there was not a grand jury impaneled because there were too many classified emails involved. I, how rich is that irony? Uh, that's mm -hmm. what comes out in this Inspector General report. So we're going to take mess. a break in a second. I'm going to end with the, the there's a big part of the IG report that talks about the decision not to prosecute. I want to talk a little bit more about that when we come back. The IG report said that they found the interpretation of these sections of law that would have been applicable here was consistent with the department's historical approach in prior cases under different leadership, including in a 2008 decision not to prosecute former Attorney General Alberto Gonzalez for mishandling classified documents. So they tried to take on this issue. We're going to talk about it more when we come back with Congressman, former Congressman Jason Chaffetz and Guy Benson here on Benson and Harf. Real news, fake news, and everything in between. Benson and Harf. We're back on Benson and Harf. I'm Guy Benson in Texas today. Marie Harf and Jason Chaffetz are in New York. As we continue, we've spent the whole hour, we might go longer, on this Inspector General report just because there's so much to unpack. Uh, Jason, I want to ask you about another report that dropped today. There's just so much happening from the House of Representatives, two investigative committees putting out a report that says, quote, documents provided to the committees prove foreign actors obtained access to some of Mrs. Clinton's emails, including at least one classified secret, according to the memos and the information that they obtained. The whole IG report is about Hillary Clinton and her grossly negligent handling of her emails and classified material. One of the lies that she told all along was that no one accessed, no one who shouldn't have accessed her emails did. And this is now additional proof beyond what Comey believes, beyond what the former Secretary of Defense believes, that in fact foreign actors did get their hands on some of this stuff because it was sitting on an email server that was not even remotely secure enough considering the stuff she had on there. I'm just, I'm just astonished, maybe I shouldn't be, that everyone's celebrating this little snarky tweet that she sent out minimizing her misconduct – over emails. I don't think that there's any contrition on her part that I can detect. No, I don't think she ever really learned that lesson. Look, James Comey's stated reason for not prosecuting Hillary Clinton was the intent issue, which, again, we could argue about. But the other portion of it is that there was not necessarily any exposure to any foreign actors, which we're now learning was not true. And, and uh, you know, I am really, really appalled by this because Classified information is classified for a reason, particularly at that level. And, you know, you had stuff that could literally get people killed up there. I'm the chairman of the I was the chairman of the oversight committee 
I have as high a security clearance as I could, and I could not see it. They wouldn't let me see it. It's that classified. Well, Jason, can I just jump in? Because I want to ask you a follow-up. Early, before you joined the program today, Marie and I were debating this classified materials thing, and she pulled rank on me because she had a security clearance, and I have not. You do as well. You've had one. So maybe you can help settle this. One of the excuses that the State Department gave on behalf of Hillary Clinton, and she gave for herself, was... It wasn't classified at the time. We were talking about and, retroactive classification. Right. And for some of them, that's true. But, but not, not all, for all of them. Uh, not were all there of any them. marked classified? Yes, and one. as the director and as Director Comey talked about publicly, and he told me privately in a conversation, he said, you can't simply read a classified uh, email and then retype it in and say that it's not classified. No, I know, but, th- and but there weren't portion markings on... on I, it was my understanding. There were on some of them. On which ones, and what were the classifications? Well, I'll go back and pull them out so we can have them up for the next show. Okay. But there were, but she's, but you know, part of it is she had the sophistication as the Secretary of State. She had to have known better. And she was, again, subverting the whole Federal Records Act by trying to have this, you know, convenient email relationship with herself. Yeah. She, at the end of the day, is responsible for this whole mess. And this is one place Guy and Jason are both going to be surprised where I agree with them. Politically, I think it was incredibly stupid. I don't know why no one on her team didn't say to her, Madam Secretary, you're going to be running for president. You shouldn't do it anyways. But just from a purely political standpoint. Well, I, um, I, I thought I, she she assumed she could get away with it and she could control the access to the information sure. and she could de- I, she could delete anything that she didn't want well, people to see. Guy, I understand that. And there have also been multiple reports now coming out that current administration officials are using private email, that Donald Trump uses his personal cell phone for calls. So I think that, like, Jason probably would agree with me. Across the federal government, we need to do better at protecting classified information. But one more question before we have to take a break here, for me at least, Jason, what are the next IG reports that we're waiting on? So it's in, in the one minute we have. Yeah, left. it's important to understand what this this report that came out today had nothing to do with FISA abuse uh, allegations, had nothing to do with Russia. And so the FISA abuse is kind of part two, if you will. It's something the inspector general is diving into that will spread into the Russia investigation. What we saw today is really the prequel to what's also going to come out later. Do we know when roughly? I have no idea. No, no idea. No idea. So we're waiting on that, which will deal with a whole nother bucket of issues that we've been talking about. And that will probably take some time, I would guess. But we will watch for it. I know you will watch for it. And we will all break it down on the Fox News Channel and on Fox Radio. We'll be back right after this with more.